Hello, Louisiana. I'm Kerry Martin, and this is the Voice of Louisiana Agriculture podcast for Friday, October 4th of 2019. Welcome to the Voice of Louisiana Agriculture podcast, a look at the latest news in Louisiana agriculture. Now, here's the host of the Voice of Louisiana Agriculture podcast, Kerry Martin. The grain market's got a great start this week with big gains on both Monday and Tuesday. The market's pulled back a bit as we move through the rest of the week, but overall it was a very good week for corn and soybeans. We'll talk about why with Grayson Close, grain marketing specialist for the Louisiana Farm Bureau Marketing Association. That's coming up later in the podcast. But first, here's a look at news headlines. U.S. Agriculture Secretary Sonny Perdue was among those today applauding an agreement between USDA and EPA regarding the next steps in building the nation's biofuel industry. Rod Bain has more from Washington. One person excited over a new USDA Environmental Protection Agency agreement designed to improve upon the existing renewable fuel standard as a policy, Agriculture Secretary Sonny Perdue, who believes he spent probably more hours on this than almost any other issue, including trade and labor. The secretary talking with reporters Friday said he believes the main takeaway from the agreement was certainty for the renewable fuel industry. It ensures the certainty of 15 billion gallons being 15 billion gallons. And EPA has agreed at the president's direction to reflect any potential small refinery waivers that are being issued to account for those in the overall total to ensure that the minimum of 15 billion gallons is obtained. The agreement also calls for a public comment period to open soon on actions that would ensure increased conventional ethanol blending into fuels starting next year, as well as increasing consumer availability of E15 blended fuels. I'm Rod Bain reporting for the U.S. Department of Agriculture in Washington, D.C. European leaders and businesses are slamming the Trump administration's plan to impose large tariffs on a wide array of European goods. The tariffs are going in place after the World Trade Organization ruled in favor of the U.S. in a long-standing dispute over subsidies given to Airbus, a European aircraft manufacturer. The administration is set to impose tariffs on roughly $7.5 billion in European goods pending WTO approval. The tariffs will be as high as 25% on agricultural and industrial products and could take effect as soon as October 18th. An American Farm Bureau Federation official says alternative proteins will not disrupt demand for animal agriculture. Michael Clements has more. The rise of alternative proteins prompts questions about how the products will impact animal agriculture production and demand. However, Scott Bennett, American Farm Bureau Federation Congressional Relations Director, says alternative proteins are not a threat to conventional meat in diets. There will always be a demographic of consumers that want and prefer conventional meat. And to be honest, that's most consumers in America. If a consumer wants to try a plant-based protein, by all means, let them try it. Our job here is just to make sure they know exactly what it is they are buying, which is in fact not meat. Bennett says AFBF supports consumer choice. However, labels cannot be deceptive or misleading. Alternative proteins are not meat, and that needs to be crystal clear. Look, in my opinion, these products are for a niche market. For most Americans just trying to feed their family, they're headed to the meat counter to pick up their next meal. Bennett says it's important to stay focused on growing the protein market. We tend to get caught up on the small slice of the pie of the market share that these alternative proteins are capturing. I would rather us focus on growing the size of the pie. That benefits more diets globally and still allows for that consumer choice. And American producers of protein are first in line to benefit from that growth. Michael Clements, Washington. Dry weather is allowing Louisiana soybean farmers to make quick work of this fall's harvest. LSU Ag Center soybean specialist Boyd Paget says this is nowhere near a record crop this year, but it's better than it could have been. We're not going to hit any home runs or break any records, I don't think. Could have been a whole lot worse with all that extremely wet weather early and then we had another flooding event when the beans were trying to mature and we lost some beans due to the flooding. Late planting dates could be to blame. Wet soggy conditions back in the spring pushed many soybean producers to plant well into June and July. Once you get past June 
the yields go down anyway, even in a good in a good year. On some of those late planted beans, they're seeing more pest problems as well. Soybean acreage is down significantly this year. In recent years, we've harvested around 1.2 to 1.3 million acres. This year, we're down in the 900,000 acre range. More than 45 million people across 14 southern states are now in the midst of what's being called a flash drought. That's cracking farm soil, drying up ponds, and raising the risk of wildfires. The weekly U.S. Drought Monitor report shows extreme drought conditions in parts of Texas, Alabama, Georgia, Kentucky, South Carolina, and the Florida Panhandle. Lesser drought conditions have also expanded in parts of Arkansas, Mississippi, and right here in Louisiana. That is a look at some of the latest news in Louisiana agriculture. Remember, you can always check our website, voiceoflouisianaagriculture.com. We update that every weekday with all the latest news and happenings in our state's agricultural industry. While you're there, be sure to click the button right in the middle of the home page and subscribe to our daily e-newsletter. It's called The Daily Voice. Just click that button, fill out your name and email address, and we'll send The Daily Voice right to your inbox every weekday morning at 5 a.m. Now let's look at the markets on The Voice of Louisiana Agriculture podcast. The soybean market ended higher today while the corn market was lower. But overall, it was a pretty good week for both beans and corn. Chris Robinson is with TJM on the trading floor in Chicago. Well, i got to remember, we're looking ahead already to next Thursday, another USDA report. And this feels like kind of a breather day. I mean, we've had a, a pretty good recovery if you step back and look. Uh, corn uh, rallied back 40 cents off its lows, filled that big gap there at uh, uh, 88 to 92 and three quarters. Uh, we're a little bit lower here today, but that was a big move. You also saw the managed money really probably cut about a third of their shorts off the books. Um, so their loss was a, a producer's gain. Uh, if you look at soybeans, though, still hanging in there around this 920 level, that's 70 cents off the bottom. Uh, and we're heading into a USDA report next week. You know, you're talking about the pro- possibility of a freeze. It would probably hurt the, the beans that got planted late worse than anything else right now would be a, a freeze. And, you know, is that being factored in? We'll see. The next big level everybody's looking at in November beans is around 932. So we'll see if we can get there. But overall, uh, you know, the, it's been a good story for corn and soybeans. Obviously, wheat has been kind of the weak sister. Wheat's been a follower more than a leader, despite the fact that the Chinese bought some white wheat from, uh, you know, the west from the, the the west coast. Basically, it really didn't follow through, and um, uh, so I think all in all, it feels like a breather week uh, as we head into and to uh, you know get ready for the USDA next week. But uh, you know, I think if you're a producer, you've got to be feeling a lot better than you were two weeks ago. Soybeans ended the week higher with November up four and a half, nine sixteen and a quarter. January beans up four and a quarter, nine thirty and a quarter. Corn closed lower. December corn down four, three eighty four and three quarters. March corn down three and three quarters, three ninety seven. July wheat up three quarters, closing at five oh seven a bushel. Rough rice closed lower. November down five and a half, eleven sixty six. January rice down five and a half at eleven ninety three. November sugar unchanged at twenty five eighty four. Now with a look at the cotton market, here's Don Molino. Cotton futures at New York slightly higher than the nearby contracts Friday as the stealth rally continues. August cotton exports were a ten year high with just over one million bales exported. That was up twenty six point one percent from last year, but down twenty seven point seven percent from July. Export commitments via weekly data show upland cotton at 57% of the USDA projection, ahead of the normal 50% pace. The cotton lucky index up 25 points at 71.95 a pound for October 3rd. The updated average world price for the week saw a slight gain to 53.36 a pound. At New York Friday afternoon, October cotton expired at 60.52, unchanged. New crop December cotton, 61.79, up 19. And March Garden, 62.51, up 15. I'm Don Molino on the Voice of Louisiana Agriculture podcast. 
at the Red River Livestock Auction, Cachetta, Louisiana, this week, two to three hundred pound steers range from a dollar twenty-five to a dollar sixty-five a pound. Three to four weight steers, a dollar to a dollar sixty. Four to five hundred pounders brought a dollar to a dollar fifty a pound. Five to six weight steers, one o three to one thirty-nine. With six to seven weight steers bringing one o four to a dollar thirty-one a pound. Cows range from a low of a hundred seventy dollars to a high of twelve sixty a head. Cow calf pairs brought six fifty to twelve fifty a pair. On the futures market, we saw mixed prices Friday. October live cattle up fifty five one o seven thirty five. October feeder cattle down thirty seven one forty one ninety seven. As we've already mentioned, it was a pretty good week for both corn and soybeans. We'll dig a little deeper into the markets with Grayson Close, Grain Marketing Specialist with the Louisiana Farm Bureau Marketing Association. That's coming up next on the Voice of Louisiana Agriculture podcast. As the old saying goes, close only counts in horseshoes. So why take the chance with weather information when it comes to critical decisions with your fields? It's time to experience pinpoint field level forecasts that are 40% more accurate than the competition. Experience the DTN Ag Weather Station. With this level of information, you'll know exactly what's happening at any time in your actual fields. This allows you to plant, spray, and harvest with a new degree of precision. Head to DTN.com today to learn more. The Voice of Louisiana Agriculture podcast. Our guest today is Grayson Close. He's a grain marketing specialist with the Louisiana Farm Bureau Marketing Association. And Grayson, as we wrap up the trading week here on Friday, it looks like we had a pretty good week for both corn and soybeans. It started off with a bang on Monday. We started off the week higher uh, with the USDA releasing their stocks report on the 30th. Uh, soybean stocks coming down because they were uh, revising production down in the U.S. And corn stocks coming down a little bit as well. I'm not really sure why they came down. Probably production concerns as well. We did see some good China buying this week. Who knows if it's, if it's just a ceremonial purchase or if it will actually ship, but they did allow six million metric tons of, of, uh, duty free purchases of soybeans from the U.S. So that's a good thing. It's a good sign of life, breathing some life into the market. So, uh, hopefully we'll see those continue and, or even have some new uh, sales approved so that we can get some more beans moving into China. Well, and speaking of China, I know that we are scheduled to have some more talks. Does the grain trade look like it's somewhat optimistic or is it just kind of in a wait and see attitude as far as these Chinese talks are concerned? I think there's some optimism. Uh, I think most of it, though, is a wait and see. The market's been down this road so many times that it's it's not really willing to take the risk at this point to have its have its heart broken again uh, by just because the trade talks break down. So, uh, to answer your question, there there is some optimism there because of the purchases that we saw this week. But like I said before, is that just a ceremonial deal, or will we actually see it ship? Grayson, we have an October USDA crop production and supply and demand report coming out next Thursday. What is the grain trade anticipating to come out in that report? Um, really looking for USDA to, to revise yield in the U.S. Not so much acres just yet. That will probably be November or even the December report before they catch up with the with the acres. But the yield, uh, because of all the weather that we've weather concerns that we've had over. The, the growing season is what the trade is looking for. Um, if they revise it down, then obviously stocks and carryouts come down again, and that could help push the market up a little bit further. Grayson, one thing that we rely on here in Louisiana is always a strong basis. How have basis levels looked here as we've moved through the fall harvest season? Historically, uh, they, they, they're they lower than we, what we're normally normally used to seeing. Um, but they have been steady, so that's a good sign that there is probably some demand coming out of the Southern Gulf, even though uh, barge, uh, freight values are higher from, from here than they are other places in the United States and South America. So hopefully they'll, they'll stay steady and even improve a little bit. That's just one of those things that we got to wait and see. 
Well, Grayson, as you have marketed grain this fall coming out on the Louisiana soybean harvest, uh, any problems crop up? You know, we had all of those quality problems last year. How has the quality of the crop looked so far this year? Knock on wood, we've had a good good quality crop. We've seen some damage due to some of the, the wet weather from Hurricane Barry earlier in the summer. Um, but uh, overall, it's been a pretty quality crop, and hopefully it stays that way. We just don't need any any big weather concerns. I think harvest is probably about half over, maybe a little bit further in the, in Louisiana. So as long as we can keep keep dry weather, I think we'll keep plugging along pretty good. The Midwest weather forecast is is always an issue at this time of year. Of course, they're trying to get harvest going up there. How are things that you're hearing coming out of the Midwest as far as getting their harvest season started? Uh, it's wet right now, so as soon as they dry out here at the beginning of next week, if if they don't get any more rain, then they'll start start to get their harvest rolling. Um, yield reports from Midwest aren't there yet, but it's, we do have some from Missouri, Tennessee, that far north. And it's just like it is here. It's variable. Most most bean yields you hear in a 10 to 15 bushels off in corn was pretty good. So uh, hopefully they dry out and can get it next week and can get in field. And hopefully they stay dry so they can get their crop out and, and get it up moving on down the river. Grayson Close, Grain Marketing Specialist with the Louisiana Farm Bureau Marketing Association. Thanks a lot for the insight, Grayson. Have a good weekend. You too, you care. Thank you. And that wraps up another week of the Voice of Louisiana Agriculture podcast. Thanks so much for listening. I really appreciate it. We'll see you back on Monday, but in the meantime, be sure to connect with us on social media. We're on both Facebook and Twitter. The handle is at Voice of LA Ag. Have a great weekend. See you Monday right here on the Voice of Louisiana Agriculture podcast. Thanks for listening to the Voice of Louisiana Agriculture podcast. This podcast is produced by Kerry Martin and the Louisiana Farm Bureau Federation. For more information, be sure to check out our website, voiceoflouisianaagriculture.org, and LAFarmBureau.org.